Welcome back to the PFRPA podcast. Today I am here with O Lion and New York Giant legend William Roberts. William, thank, thank you for thank joining you, us, man. man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you hanging out, man. This hey, is awesome. Hey, good calls here. Hey, so so look, let let's dig in right away because we don't get too many old linemen on the show. You gotta get some old linemen respect and some love. <laughs> means a lot of views and a lot of likes on this socially, right? You got to show we, the old line we love. We only love and like ourselves most of the time. That's right. Look, Mushroom club. Everybody else. <laughs> you know, if you're not making a, a good block, you're getting a penalty. That's right. So that's all we know for. Getting penalty. That's right. Now we, we, we pass that now. All right. So let's, let's talk about you. And let's talk about your illustrious, amazing career with two Super Bowl victories. We'll get to that in a second. But let's let's back up. Tell me about where you played college ball, wh- where you played in the pros. Give me the rundown. Well, I'm a, I'm gonna take it further than that. If you go downstairs and pick up some dirt, that's my dirt. <laughs> I'm from right here in <laughs> Miami, Florida, nice. where the Super Bowl is. I can see the Super Bowl stadium, the Dolphin Stadium, from my backyard. So oh born and gosh. raised in Miami, Florida. Um, at the time, University of Miami was really at me. Um, I decided to, you know, take my talents to Ohio, and um, the Buckeyes oh, signed with. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did. I went there. <laughs> I had to go. No, go ahead, say it. I the, know you want to say it. The the uh, Ohio State. I just University. hate it. I, just I know. Hate it, man. I know. It. Why did every single guy? Does I'm gonna that? tell you. I'm why. gonna start saying the Michigan State no, University. No, it doesn't have a ring. <laughs> Is, I'm going to tell you why it's, why I said, and it should have been said a long time ago, because when you look at the man, man on, on school established 1891, it says the Ohio State University. So it's on as soon as you drive into campus. So it's not, not, that it's not nothing from? that's just made up. It's been there, but guys just start saying it. <laughs> so now everybody thinks that, oh, they're just trying to be sporty. No. The marquee says the Ohio State University, established 1891. That's oh where it comes gosh, from. We finally know. That's where it comes from. But the guys don't oh, tell you, just I, like yeah, the pioneers won't from. tell you, like the, the NFL, they won't tell you what got everything started. Oh, man. And that's where we are today. I, so you I'm, go I'm back from to Ohio forward. originally. What far? Uh, north, northern Ohio, Cleveland. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. So Cuyahoga County, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I don't, I don't claim it anymore. I've been in Texas long <laughs> enough now. Live in Austin. Uh, that I think my Ohio has all been beat out yeah. of me down there in Texas. Um, but I, I just remember. So it was John Cooper was there when I when I was coming out yeah. of high school, and I just wasn't going to play for him, man. And I remember I got such huge hate mail from people in Ohio that I was betraying my Ohio you know, heritage. They expect the good ones to go oh, there. The good was, ones to go bad. there. But bad. they also come down this way and get some That's of the right. good ones. So That's right. The, but bring you know, it up speed. You know, <laughs> cut you off. Bring it up speed. It came up. Yeah. Uh, Ohio um, almost went to Tulane. God bless the, the program out here. My brother How in the Tulane. world would you come down to Tulane in Ohio State? Because my brother was there. Uh, and Mama, okay. I'm the baby boy of three. Okay. Mama said she wanted a big brother to protect me. Dad said, no, you're going on your own. Yeah. So I chose Ohio State. Okay. But I don't say D because, you know, when I was coming up, I wasn't saying it. So I, I give him credit for saying it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's Ohio State to me. Yeah. So Who's head coach back then? Earl Bruce. Earl Bruce. I remember that. Now, yeah. I miss Woody by two years. In hindsight, I wish I would have had Woody. Yeah. We went nine and three, four years, no Rose Bowl. Wow. We tied I when 82. They got to go because the last one, they hadn't went in 28 years. So we had just, that's why I went. Yeah. I like the Rose Bowl program. But yeah. everything worked out fine. Yeah. Fast forward, um, draft day. Redskins pick number 27. They took 14 minutes and 45 seconds. Back then it was 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, they traded the pick to the Giants. I was Giants. Wow. Became a New York Giants. New York football Giants. First thing I said, they were 3 12 and 1. I said, I know I'm going to (laughs) play. You're right. I'm going to (laughs) play. 3 12 and 1. Yeah. They sorry and they tied one game. Yeah. I know I'm going to play. Started as a rookie. So tell everybody about that New York Giants team. It's 1983. Um, or 82. The, when I first went yeah, in? Yeah, when you That was an 80, um, 83 team. 83. So, yeah. Phil Sims? Phil Sims. Quarterback? Yeah. 
Who My draft was eighty four draft. Okay. Yeah. So okay. um they they um you know, no Lawrence was there. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of guys I didn't know. The, ori- the original LT. Uh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, the one. Yeah. I, the <laughs> other one, I don't really, you know. I, I can't see him as LT work. anyway. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work, man. Because when, it. I, when, well, they, when I hear your LT, props. it's like, oh, that's not my yeah. guy. Yeah. So that team, you know, Parcells' first year as a head coach. Well, second year because he had um, uh, the guy from Alabama. I can't think of his name. Anyways, uh, Ray something. I, know, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's, real stern I'm guy. seeing, a, seeing yeah. that picture in my head, but so, <laughs> both of us here yeah. going there. You know, a lot of that. Yeah, we can remember them plays, but yeah. some of the other stuff. Right. But, um, you know, rookie year coming in, Leonard Marshall was there. Um, he had a lot of good linebackers because he coached the linebackers. Talking about Bill Parcells. Yeah, yeah. So he was a linebacker guy. Belichick was a secondary guy. So they was more of a defensive team. Harry Carson, Hall of Famer, you know, in the wow. middle. And you what know, a team. Okay, uh, let me fast forward a minute. Pace party. Yeah. The, 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 what did you guys call it? It was five on five, beginning of practice. You just go get a concussion. I, I think just we, just called, we just called it inside run. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't no play, though. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what I ran into Harry Carson. I realize it's a grown man's game now. Yeah. yeah. You got to grow up fast here because you'll get your neck broke if not. And, yeah. you know, not, not to say what happened, but – Things happen. It happens fast. So coming from Ohio to the Giants, it was like, uh, okay, I have to grow up. Yeah. This this up. the transition of that. Yeah. The, just dealing with the speed, the difference in yeah. speed from college ball to pro ball. Yeah. It, that amazed me. Like yeah. literally, I remember sitting in a meeting in, in my first year in Jacksonville. So I'm a rookie. You know, it's it's Jacksonville's first year. Yeah. So we're there with a mix of Inaugur- vets. Yeah, inaugural season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. So sitting there with a mix of vets on the O line and I literally thought that we were watching practice film in fast forward. The speed. I was asking our center speed. at the time, Dave Waddell, I was like, Dave, why the why speed. are we watching this in fast forward? But it, it was literally that fast. Yeah. Yeah. It, and just that blew my mind yeah. and the fact that you play up to that speed too. How right? did you get to a college? How did I get to my no, college? I'm saying, um where did you go? I went college? to Michigan State. Okay, you're a Michigan Spartan. State. Spartan. I'm a Spartan. That's Carl Banks. Oh yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't going anywhere south, man. I wasn't going to play in that heat. That's why they got. That's why you got the hate mail. You was close. <laughs> you was close to the team up north that yeah. we don't like to say from Ohio. That's right. But you was almost there. But okay. We have a lot in common with Parcells yeah. and the fact that my head coach in Jacksonville was Tom Coughlin, who was a receivers coach yes. with the Giants yes. when you were there. Yes. So I, I know our practices were unbelievably hard. What, what was it like to be a New York Giant back in the day under My Parcells? Goodness. It was like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting choked up now. <laughs> if you late, you might as well oh. aisle a window. Oh. You know, it's, it's kind of, it was like, I've never been in the military but I could kind of relate to the strictness and the no ten, nonsense. Ten minutes early was on time. That's right. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> now, Bill didn't stress it, but you felt it. Tom stressed it. Oh, yeah. Bill didn't stress it, but you got the look and you got the impression that, okay, do it again. Yeah. You won't yeah. be doing it here. But the, the demeanor of that, those practices and everything, no stone unturned um, from, from, from your gear – to the way you get water, to the way you stretch. Everything. Every detail. If you're not taped, yeah. you're getting fined. We used to jokingly call Tom uh, Statman when he was there because he literally had the data on everything. everything. And every single thing that you did, everything that transpired in the game, I mean, it was just it was amazing. He knew it. Talk about attention to detail. Uh, that's why Bill had him. Oh, there's no question. There's no had. question. But look at—I mean, those guys that all that came from, you know, that Parcells camp. I mean, the success that they've yes. had. Yes. Belichick and Coughlin yes. and, and and the tree grows on. Oh know? my gosh, it's, it's amazing. A, it's a nice tree. Yeah. And then Belichick yeah. branched out with his tree. You know what? You know what's you funny know? is is you know I think it's, it's, I, you know, at least speaking for me as a young player, you mm-hmm. know, you're twenty something years old mm-hmm. and and you know. Not liking it 
very much, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and how hard it was and, and just how angry I would get. But, but looking back on things now, he was right. Yeah. He was right about a lot of it. Uh, just how, how to build a team that knows how to win. Let me ask you this. Was your game so easy as opposed to practice? Oh. Game uh, was game. like. Looking forward to game day. Whoa. Yeah. This, this, this is another part of life here. Yeah. Game was so easy, but practice was like, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah. You know, guys say they love football. I didn't love it. I liked it a lot, but I didn't love it. Yeah. You know, and I could say it, but I liked it so much that it made me grow as a man and it made me continue to excel and to be the player that I, I should have been. I could have been better, yeah. but I, I don't have any regrets. Yeah, well, that's a good place to be in. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so many of us, I, I know I have some regrets on, on you know, things I wished I would have right. done better, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, looking back on it. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I was, at the end of the day, I was really blessed to be in, yeah. in the NFL, to yeah. be a part of it, to be a part and of this brotherhood. You how O-line is special, oh, a man. special brotherhood, because yeah. those guys in that room, that's where <laughs> everything is made. <laughs> That's where That's wins right. are made. That's, That's where right. the whole team revolves around the offensive line. I, I, you know, I'm gonna share a special moment with you, and I, I bet you you can you could uh, you have one of your own that's similar. It was 1996, and we're in the playoffs, and we're getting ready to go play the Denver Broncos in, in the playoffs. Um, if we win this game, we go off the FC Championship game. Okay. okay? And I'm sitting next to Leon Searcy in the locker room. Leon. And it's the, the end of the season, right? I mean, everybody's dog tired and, you know, can't wait till off season hits and mm -hmm. things like that, right? At the same time, your mind is in the game and what you're doing. And I remember we had a brief moment where we go, man, wouldn't it be nice if it was off season? We could be like out in the pool. <laughs> We're sipping on a nice tea in the yeah. next week or so. Wouldn't yeah. that be great? And we both looked at each other at the same time and go, now, but you know we're going to win. We, we knew we were going to win that game. And, and that was one of the, the best things to be a part of and that I experienced in the league, of being a part of a team that just knew it was going to win. We knew we were good. Mm -hmm. We knew we were going to bring it every day. And that makes so much difference with confidence. And as yeah. an old lineman, you have to have confidence in yourself because everybody else is against you. Yeah, you know everybody's yeah. against you in the offensive lineman, but to know you're gonna win, that confidence is great, man. It's great to have. So tell me about this you, with playing on a team with such a storied player as LT, as mm -hmm. Lawrence Taylor. Talk to me about one-on-one -on -one pass pro during practice, especially during training camp. What was it like? I'm sure you had your fair amount of time against LT. What was that like? It was like. Um, Everybody stops and watches one on one. Yeah. LT, Carl Banks, whoever lines up, it was the highlight of practice. Yep. Everybody, the cameraman got four angles going on. Yeah. You go from the set to the, the, the end result. And it was so pressurized that when you got in the game, you got this. It was so pressurized that Bill would say, let me see that again. And he'll do a different move. And let me see that again. And, it, and, and this all comes down to, can I do this? Yeah. I have to do this. I'm stressing at night how to do this one-on-one -on -one blocking yeah. because Phil is going to feel it if I can't block. That's right. Okay. Everybody going to feel it if I can't block. And that goes for each guy up front, one through five. Yeah. Everybody was pressurized, and it made a difference in the game because – you got a guy like LT, you got a guy like, you know, Banks, you got Jim Burt, you got Leonard Marshall, you got all these highly touted D linemen and linebackers, and we have to block them. Yep. We got one way or the other, we got to block them. The most unnatural position in football to oh. play, right? To be an offensive lineman, to, you know, have somebody 
blitzing up the middle or taking that guy on the outside, and you have to back up or you have to stay in that position. Right? See, only an offensive lineman would know that. See, we're talking the same language yeah. because it's unnatural for somebody going fast as they can forward and you trying to go fast as you can backwards. Yeah. Who runs backwards? <laughs> yeah, right. Us and defensive backs. <laughs> That's right. The difference is defensive backs don't hit every play. Yeah. They could you know it's a run play. They just well, shadow box it. And, and the difference – in an old lineman of from being balanced to unbalanced is so fine. It's such a fine line. I remember, you know, playing against Reggie White, right? I'm sure you've had huh? your day, right? Yes, sir. The hump move. Yeah, right? that's Reggie's. when I was on the right side. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> feared. Tall. Hey, I see yeah, them all. Yeah, so that hump move, but I remember the first time Reggie put me in that hump move, and I remember as a rookie playing against him. Going, all right, I know it's coming, so he can't possibly hit me with this move. I know. It's third and long. Okay, here it comes. He's going to take me outside, and then he's going to come back to the inside with a hump move. I still didn't stop it, man. I knew it was coming, but but the difference Everybody between being balanced and unbalanced was so minuscule. It yeah. literally was your body being out of position yeah. an inch. Yeah, that's you know? all it took. That's all it took. And the hump move is like, okay, here it comes. So – here it comes. Let's talk about some of the most devastating pass rushers you faced. Ooh. All right, so we know you got Reggie, right? Okay. All-time great. That's, no, that's number one. Number two was Jerome Brown. Jerome Brown? I played Who's guard that? when I played Jerome for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. He got killed in the car accident. Uh, Buddy Ryan's defense. They had Reggie. They had Mike Pitts. They had Jerome Brown. They had Clyde Simmons. Clyde Simmons, yeah. Clyde the Clyde. I had man. all those guys. <laughs> Clyde was actually in Jacksonville for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Okay, now we move on to, um, well, I can't say LT, he's on my team. We got Dexter, you know, Dexter, oh he has some moves. Uh, Charles Mann. Most of mine came out of the East. Yeah. Okay, yeah. NFC East. Uh, one guy who schooled me as a rookie, and I never got a chance to get him back. Before your time, before my time, Leroy Selman. <laughs> yes, I know Leroy, Leroy Selman. Selman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I couldn't get him back. And then we got a guy in San Francisco. Um, ah, we was in the playoffs my rookie year. Fred. It was Fred Dean. Fred Dean. Fred Dean. How about – You how guys about, had wiggle back then. I can't wait to see the expression on your face when I say this name. Jumpy Gathers. Forklift. <laughs> every single Forklift. time, every lineman knows. I wouldn't let him get me. You oh got to stay low with Jumpy. Oh Just like with Reggie with the hump, you got to stay low. <laughs> so he never got you? No. He said, man, what are you doing? Your arm? He had long arms too. I would you, get him before think? the fork came. Yeah. So now the fork, my arms are in the way of his forklift. I see him walk guys back, man. The forklift. Walk them back and put them on their back, cockroach them. I mean, Man, it's like, and, and, and it was kind of a crazy move. It was really a move to absolutely demoralize. It was because of what you he weren't did getting the sack you. out of this because he was pretty much tackling you. He didn't you. want the sack. He was making sure you're not going to block him. And if he put his Free hand on the quarterback, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a might get the sack. But man, that. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna throw another name out there. Let me see. Um, How about Richard Dent. I was at guard then. Okay. Then Jumbo dealt with Dent a lot. But yeah. He had he had the wiggles. Jumbo you know. Elliott. Jumbo Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Yeah. So Dent was on the outside. By that time, I'm in guard. I'm dealing with the McMichaels and the those guys and the the fridge yeah. and the 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 the, um, the butts. Let's talk Dave about butts the fridge for a minute. Now yeah. you, you played against them, obviously. Yeah. That the notorious '85 Bears team. Yeah. Those guys. And, and one of our board members, Mike Singletary. Yes. Uh, what was that like playing against those 85 Bears, that defense? Uh, it was like, um, how do we run the ball? How do we pass the ball? <laughs> how do we move the ball? <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like, pick your poison. We, we really can't do anything. Now, the first year we played them, I was on injury reserve. Okay. And that's when they went to the Super Bowl. Right. The next year we played Monday night, you know, because, you know, they, the first, the ones who won the Super Bowl that previous year played the ones who, I don't know how they matched it up. The yeah. previous yeah, winner, yeah. the post winner. So after the second, we beat them the second time. But the first time, the punter, 
mysteriously the ball just blew away from the Windy City <laughs> and John Landetta, he had a mishap. Yeah. We were in the playoffs. I was on injury reserve, but we were battling for the Super Bowl that year. But we found out a way to try to move the ball on them. And, you know, they had a star-studded defense. Oh, yeah. I mean, across a the A star-studded. And yeah. they had a star-studded coach. Yeah. You know, yeah, so sure. it was like, uh, do we run? Do that? The Bear defense, it, it, it has its own name now. Yeah. Everybody runs the Bear defense yeah. at some form. So, right. you know, you cover up the five and let everybody else run around. So how do we run against this? <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, we went goal line a yeah. lot of times, man. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to you'd have get to. that heavy formation in man. there. Man, right? yeah, you call it some stuff out now, man. man. That's wow. Oh man, what's some great memories? But getting back man, to that one on one, that pressurize, it's like, uh, what a, a diamond's not a diamond until it gets pressurized, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that pressure, man, in practice from Parcells and and, and knowing that that eye in the sky. And, and are you going to get cut today? It never lies. <laughs> I in the sky never cut lies, today? man. It's there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you feel like you're feeling bad. You know you had a couple of bad sets. Like you said, that positioning it, and I, all I, balance. I think, and it's, I, think, I think it's hard for, for most people, especially if you've never experienced it, what that's like for a lineman going through one-on-one -on -one pass pro during right. practice. And it's something you do every day. Yes. You know, even yes. if you're just walking through. Even I see the senior bowl guy. It's, yeah. It's, in, it's, in, oh, it's, you're making it's part your, of life. You're making your your draft selection. And a one -on -one. Seriously. I'm uh, coaching one -on -one guys. It's pro. like, you know, we get to go, okay, one-on-one. -on -one. I, I remember that. 707. You do divas go down there. That's right. <laughs> Here come the big boys. Come but on. Tell you what, every coach – Every coach in the league's there, man, standing around one on one pass, bro. They They're gonna see it, you. Gonna man up. All the scouts, <laughs> yep. everybody you could think of, and people in the stands. All you hear when Lawrence come up, woo! He be a, did a spin on somebody, yeah. woo! And he making the same noise, <laughs> woo! I'm looking at him like, oh man, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's to demoralize us, yeah. but it makes us hard. It makes yeah. us better. Yeah. It turns us into diamonds because that know. pressure. You really? can only take so much of it. And I after a while, still, I, you go into the gym. Yeah. I can know? still do pass pro in my sleep. I'm telling you. Like, still, after all these I years. I teach my homeboys how yeah. to get them in the yeah. tight right there. They doing, I see them practice on each other. Yeah. We grown old men. I know. I said, look here, <laughs> man. You got to get it up in here. You got to grab. Right. Grab the peck. Now, I got to tell you. Still, I'm still coaching this move, this, this blocking yeah. technique. Yeah. That's how much it, it inspired me to get better, to be a better lineman, to be a better better player, because if you could block one on one, yeah, of, in it. front of a bunch of people, yeah. no people, you could block one on one. Yeah. In a phone booth. Well, that was a perfect transition. So let's talk about let's talk about your transition years a little bit. Cause it's a big topic. Yeah, it was. It's, you know, and the, and it's a it's a really important time for for every retired guy. Those first years, especially. Yeah. When you when you kind of uh, I say it like we fall off into the abyss, right? Football is over. Yeah. It, it never ends how you think it's going to end, yeah. and it's just quiet. And you're trying to figure out your life, right, after the game. So tell me a little bit about your transition time. What was it like when you first got out? What were you going through? Well, it to to back up a little bit. It almost ended before I thought it was going to end. Because my second year in the league, first first day of practice, second practice of two a days, full gear, I tore my ACL. Oh. Yeah, so my rookie year, I had a bad um, foot problem. Yeah. So Parcells looking at me like, uh, what, I got Injury a potato problem. chip? Yeah. 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 Then I messed my finger up. The doc say, hold up, you're not going to play the piano? I say, no, tape it up. I got to go. Because I'm coming off of ACL, and then I hurt yeah. my ring finger on my blocking hand. And so I'm like, whoa, I'm not ready to be uh, on the streets and you know, <laughs> retired. Yeah. So yeah. the fast forward to you know, the transition, all of that made me stronger till I wanted to leave the game when I wanted to leave. And as linemen, we don't never want to leave. Yeah. You know, some yeah. circumstances happen, but uh, I went white knuckle, like, no, Bill, no, give me one more year. I'm scratching. Bill, give me one more year. Yeah. So at that time, I was with the Jets my last year, and um, he couldn't. He said, kid, I can't do it. You know, I got some guys yeah. over there, and, yeah. you know, if I keep letting you gnaw on that bone, they're going to never develop. 
he was right. Because if I get in there, I'm going to play. So yeah. I'm older, but I'm still doing my thing, you know. So um, that was it. He let me go. Nobody called. Not a nothing. Voicemail, nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, what am, what am I going to do? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still in that, that pass rush mode. I'm still in one-on-one mode. Yeah. So I, uh, I sit back. I had a house in Georgia. Just, you know, had a newborn. Well, she was three. And um, I'm like, I ain't ready to stay home because I ain't used to being home. Yeah. So I guess the call. Guess who it's from? Who's that? Bill Parcells. Nice. I got a kid in Georgia. I was living in Georgia then. I want you to go work him out. I said, okay, coach, I could do that. So I ran the guy, Randy Thomas was the name. So I worked him out, did some pass rush drills and everything. He said, what you think? He called me, what you think, uh, Big Will? I said, coach, I think he, he could play in the league. I think, and they said he had a learning disability. I said, coach, I didn't see that. And see, guys get labeled. Yeah, yeah. I said, I didn't see that, coach. So, you know, he drafted him and everything. And um, he called me back to coach. Nice. So he set me down, I guess, to, to I don't know what he set me down for, to, I guess, gather myself. And he called me, what you doing? And he said, I want you to go work this kid out. Not knowing he was bringing me up training camp and put me on the staff as assistant O-line coach with the Jets. Right. So – that was my mini transition. So I got a uh, breath of fresh air. I'm back in yeah, ball, yeah. but not on the field. But I'm still showing the guys the move, how to, you know, right, I'm right. still into it. And the guy, I was like young enough to actually do the drills with him. So two years later, um, that's when Belichick got the team. Mr. Leon Hess passed away. Yeah. In his will, he wanted Bill Belichick to own, uh, run the team to be the head coach. Bill Parcells was the GM. One day later, Belichick resigns. Okay, now, hmm. press conference, Belichick resigns. He goes to New England. Al Groh becomes the head coach. I was there uh, two more years. I'm still there, three years now. This all happened in three years. Al Groh gives us an email. I'm going to Virginia uh, to coach. Uh, you've been very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> and that's I it. can't get an invite. Yeah, right. Everybody left. All the coaches got somewhere else to go. I'm the only one left. I'm new in the coaching game now. Yeah. I'm barely out of the playing game. And I'm I'm like, I got too much energy. I'm like, I can't play. Now, the coaching, okay, guess once again, no one calls. Yeah. You know, when you're a coach, <laughs> right, you, if yeah, I ain't yeah. going to the senior bowl or all that, no one calls. Now that's when the transition starts. Okay. <sighs> I come back to Florida then. Sold my house in Georgia. Divorce. Because my mind ain't ready for yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like. Uh, that's 90 some percent of us, oh, man. The, the divorce rate's way too high. Oh, Drug and, you, and alcohol. And, and, and we got high. dog years. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. age like dogs. So, yeah. you know, everyone Tell me is about, Especially under Parcells what? and Coughlin. Man, come on. It dog years may be. <laughs> that's push, that's, that's light. That's light, right. Yeah. So, no call, no nothing. You know, I'm still working out and everything, and nothing's happening. So, um,. I was blessed, but I was also sickly stricken. I had a um, I had a brain tumor, right? Yeah. So I had to go under the knife. They extracted the size of a peach seed wow. on my left side. And now I can't do anything. I'm yeah. in rehab in the hospital. I'm trying to get myself together, my bearings. Right. After a while, you know, it's like, here come the disability. Okay, so I applied. Um, they was like, like you, like, hey, what are you talking about? This didn't cause. Yeah, it wasn't from football. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You serious? So um, court battles, back and forth, lawyers, everything. Finally, they came through with uh, TNP, right? Yeah. So that's um, total permanent right. disability. Um, that was like five years after I was left the game. 
Yeah. But those five years, it was like I'm I'm stream, I'm like losing my mind. Oh, because yeah. all I yeah. know was between those lines. And all I knew was putting my hand down. And all I knew was taking the first step, which is a good step, or taking the kick step. Yeah. And all I knew was getting low, having yeah. leverage, and winning. And, and in the locker room, and getting taped up, taped up with fingers. <laughs> and I'm sweating, thinking about all this stuff. And it's like, well, God, I guess um, my playing days are over. I'm going to have to, you know, accept that and become a mentor of young men. And, and that's probably what the, my best thing I did. I started mentoring guys, coaching them, teaching them about oh, life. Nice. Because yeah. once you stop playing, your life does go on. That's right. You can't play forever, okay? Now, how far you want to go, how far you want to take it, that's up to you. But your days are going to be over. You're going to be an ex-ball player. Now, when you think, when you're playing, you, you don't see that. Ever. You invincible. <laughs> you yeah. club and then you got the money, you got the cars, you got everything. Yeah. But when you get older, I remember when I came in as a rookie, Harry Carson, those, these guys had kids in camp. George Martin, he, his, his son, the ball boy. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm like, whoa. He called him pup. He got a pup as his son. Yeah. So I remember those guys on their way out. Yeah. They didn't want to go either. And when I got to that point, you know when you get to the point where you, you triple up, rookies triple up on the flame. Yep. <laughs> After a while, you got the whole row. That's right. I got to the whole row point because you're the elder statesman now. Right. So when I got to that point, I, rem I remember it was slowly. I'm going to have to find something to do. And then when they start calling you Pops. Yeah, old man, what's up? Boy, I had a hard Victor time. Green today. Old man, what's up? And, I say and, you and was you old man what? too, now. You know, you know who, who first told me that? It's my, it was my, uh, it's my, my rookie year, second year in the league, uh, Clyde Simmons. Yeah, be glad. Because he, I called he him. done left Philly now. Right, right. But yeah. he'd been in the league yeah, this exactly. for like 15, 16 exactly, years. Exactly, exactly. And I just man. called him Pops one day. How did he take it? He said, Turn around, calm, cool. It's Clyde. He's always cool, yeah, right? Clyde, Clyde, quiet and cool. That's right. He goes, hey, look, man, uh, I can appreciate this, but he goes, but I want you to know this. It's going to be like this, and somebody's going to call you Pops. Yeah. And I was like, right, oh, come on, whatever. Let's get out to practice, yeah. right? And it just stayed with me, and I remember I got to Cincinnati. It was my second year in Cincinnati, and some this rookie from the Ohio State <laughs> calls me Pops. You know, I got great was hair coming Wilkerson, in by was then. Was Wilkerson? <laughs> no. Okay. No, 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 no. This was after him. Okay, okay. It was okay. some kid, actually. I, I can't remember his yeah, name, but he got them, in a lot of when trouble. When the started coming. Oh, know. man. Oh, the one who lost his mind. Yeah, he got in a lot of trouble, and he actually left school, but he was supposed to be this All-American, like, stud. Looked like Offensive Tarzan. lineman. Okay. I'm, yeah, he I'm, wasn't I'm ready. I think of the name. He, got, he put, like, a year or two in at Ohio State and tried to make it in the league okay. as a lineman. And, you know, you're just not ready yet. No. You can't. It's not like other positions. No. So when he pop, you, when he man, pop you, yeah, your man strength isn't there yet. No, you're still a boy. <laughs> That's right. That's when I realized when I was a rookie. Y'all, this yeah. is a grown man game. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hey. Very much so. Well, listen, man. This has been this has been awesome. Man, I, I, love, like, I love I love going down love these, this, this man, journey, man. Only we could talk the language that we're talking yeah. without speaking a different language. So we know what we're saying when you call him forklift and this guy and I'm saying this that. It's like the the one on ones and the, the intense pressure and and man, it's like only we know in that that mushroom club, you know. That's right. That's only right. Only we know the secrets that That's goes right. on because it gets emotional in that room. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you feel like everybody is is like no, it's not gonna be like that. We're not gonna be the weak link. And, and I think maybe you know? there's a special piece of heaven where. We're all back together in that room again, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, Cracking jokes. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> right? There's you're right. Be. The mushroom like, club. Like, you know, it's not all of my heavens. Yeah. Certainly my wife and kids are there yeah. with me, right? But I think there's a piece of it that, that all of us kind of hope yeah. <laughs> goes back to that room and those moments in that locker room. So, But I want to um, just speak up on why I'm here. Yeah, yeah let's talk about that. Because it's, it's, it's good. You know, I want you to shoot at me and see how I respond to why I'm here. All right, so let's do it. In this room so, with this here. All right, so here, here's the big question. So why don't you share with us why you're here today with PFRPA on this podcast with me. Okay, the first the first mention of it was back in the day with Dicka and, you know, when guys were trying to 
get the lawsuit going and, and they were trying to help the older guys who weren't getting any really help or funding. And it, it came up to a head, I think the courts, and it was in the court system and everything. And after a while, it kind of decrescendoed down and yeah. faded. And then last year, I get a, a notice about dental. What? Yeah, yeah. For real? <laughs> so at the time, I was getting my grill tight, you know? Right. So it like stepped in at the right time, the right place. So now I'm like, okay, this is for us. Yeah. Pre-93 and all, I'm hearing the lingo, but I didn't really dig in. Now I'm digging in and I'm, I'm like wanting um, guys to get the help because you know, you know, the picks we were, you, some guys wouldn't pick. Some guys were um, free agents and, and, and walking, whatever. They didn't get the help they need. Yeah. To this point in time, they still not getting it. Now, lo and behold, today, I sit down at the table, they say, oh, we got vision. Whoa, what? You yeah. wear glasses? Yes, I do. So now I'm thinking, okay, now, here we go. We back in them film room with the O-line. So we whipping up the, the plan. We whipping it up to how we can run the play, how we can get the, the pass pro together, how we can manipulate anything and everything to make this team That's P, right. what's the initials? F-R-P-A. P, how we can make that work. Yeah. So now we building, and I can see, that's why I asked you how, how long you've been here, because I'm 100. I'm 100. Yeah. And I want all the guys that, that, that jump on and put this thing behind our backs in this pool. I think this is, you know, for me personally, what, what gets me so excited about the PFRPA is it's finally, this is our association. This is for Solo. the players. By, the, by players. the players that doesn't have a direct link to New York, you know what I mean? Uh, and I and I think it's uh, what we're what we're trying to do here is build that that special bond and that special community amongst these retired players because o only we know mm -hmm. what it's truly like, mm -hmm. and, and that reconnecting process and uh, that's so needed, mm -hmm. right? In in a deeper, more meaningful way, right? Um, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about the future of the PFRPA mm -hmm. uh, and where it's going across the board, how it's helping guys, not just on the health side of things, but, uh, you know, but on the, the business side as well. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's, you know, from an association standpoint, caring about my health and my business, if you can help me in those two areas, yes. that that's what I care about. And, and that's why I'm so excited about this and, and, and where we're going as an association. I mean, the, the board of the PFRPA reads like the who's who of the NFL, right? That's right. Jim Brown is chair. You got right. Mike Singletary and Mike Haynes and, no and Ron what, Mix. The other yeah. entities don't want to see it happen because yeah. they don't have a that's hand right. in it. That's right. They can't get into the kitchen and put their ingredients in it. And that's why we need to send the message of – Hey, this is this is a fight. We're we're building this, yeah. and this is for us. And we need we need the players that are involved um, to be involved mm -hmm. here, right? It's, it's this because this is ours. This and is truly you, ours. One thing about a player, you gonna be retired player. You gonna oh, be yeah. an ex player. Yep. Whether you want to do it or yeah. not, yeah. by choice, by God, you gonna be an ex player. You gonna be a retired player because you can't play forever. You know, and you you mentioned something really important. You talk about the the pre-93. Now, I know something that is uh, hot on my mind uh, is is pension parity, uh, of getting guys that are pre-93 retirees yeah. pension parity with today's modern-day players. Like we, have, we have got to find a way to make that happen. It happens in the NBA. Yes. It's happened in Major yes. League Baseball. Yes. There's no reason why – it should ha it, the, it shouldn't be happening in the most successful sports <laughs> entity yeah. in the world. Yeah. Why why you cut right? the line right there? Right. You know, why you draw the line there? I don't know why. Yeah. I, I mean, with, realistically, we know that, look, we're, we're losing about 150 guys a year that retired pre-93. Yeah, I know. Right? So what's important, I think, for people to understand is it doesn't just in uh, – these things, these programs, these things that, that are being developed for – for players don't just affect one single player. Nope. It's them and their entire family, these programs, these 
you know, whether it's for your health benefits or business and, and just how critically important this is. But And one thing about it, you can see there's a lot of programs over there, but we're coming up too. So we yeah. need the same programs, the That's same right. help on this side. That's right. Retired player is different from an alumni. Yeah. No. Yeah, totally. So, you know, alumni, you pay dues if you want to. Retired right. player, you played the game. That's you right. got taped up. You That's know, right. You got mentally ready. So it's like, okay, I got to be for what I've been. I've been a player. That's I'm right. a retired player now. That's right. So that's why I am. I'm still an alumni, but I'm a retired player. That's Everybody right. can't be a retired player. Yeah. But it's a special thing. It's special. Listen, man, I, I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Me, man. Hey, awesome. I enjoyed this, man. It's been awesome.